Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building. And this time you can see my big dog, Big <laughs> Nate Dog, in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Yes. Right there, we had to test the levels out, make sure that y'all yes. can hear us. Uh, <laughs> anyways, how you doing, Big Dog? I'm doing good. I'm, you know, Isaiah, man, I was I was down the last few days, what man. You down but about, man? Just, you know, my you know, immune system. Was, oh, okay. And I and I was nervous, you know, because okay. my girl had came from across them waters, man, Israel. Ooh. So I'm looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it was a little head cold, a little day quill, night quill got me. I'm like, cause you know, I, I panicked because Understood. Yeah, yeah. So but anyway, yeah. I'm I'm up and thumping right okay. about now. All right. Yeah. I see yeah. you guys you got the sweatpants yeah. on. You look like you're so, ready to do something. You know what, man? It's a lot of things that happen in this world too. Yeah, it's a lot. Good, bad and indifference man yeah. but I'm gonna let you lead this show I'm not hey, gonna up, try man. to take I, over I always gotta do a little self check I make sure that you are good you know so I'm, I've had a busy week yeah. I've had a busy what's week what's busy I, for I have, you I have my my oldest daughter Nadia her birthday because okay. she turned 11 wow okay. happy birthday happy yeah. birthday yeah, and my, I had my twins they had a birthday so my Nadia was birthday was the 21st my twins birthday was the 27th wow okay and my anniversary was the 28th 10 year anniversary Wow. So busy seven days, a lot of money out. Taking care of a lot of people, man, and loving them, huh? Loving on them, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Now I need somebody to love on these pockets. You know what I'm I saying? Hear you, man. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> he, he got a little deal, you get a little cap ash or a cap ash or whatever. Yeah. Oh, man. But no, everything's good, man. Um, so you, you know we always gotta talk a little bit of the, of the cowboys. You know, we're yes. here in detail, okay? People right. see the people see the helmet, they know what we're gonna talk about. That's not the only thing we're gonna talk about. Right. But we always got to check in okay. with what's going over there, what's going on over there at the star. Right. Uh, we've talked on the all season acquisitions, but one of the things we haven't talked about, Big Nate Dog, is your area of expertise, and that is the offensive line. You know what? And I'm glad we're talking about it today because the thing, the moves they have made with getting the DB okay. Gilmore, if yep. I'm pronouncing that right, yes, sir. And then when I'm going out and getting Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks, man, that was moves that was well done, moves that were needed to be made. Yeah, and I'm not mad, especially the way they arranged Cooks' contract. Yeah, so they were playing less than ten mil. Oh yeah, yeah. well Houston had to. They took six million dollars off it. I think they're playing. Dallas is paying twelve million, I believe. Yeah, so. They are paying the right amount, and I wish they would have used that money elsewhere. Mm. But I, Brandon Cooks, he'll earn his money. He will come in and You're run balling. the correct routes. He will he will know what to do. He's smart. He will catch the ball. He's a guy that the locker room loves. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's a workaholic. So that is what I like about him. What the defensive back Gilmore will bring is experience. Still got fresh enough legs to make plays. We talked about it last week. He's a playmaker. I got I got a question for you, Nate. This is uh -huh. something that most people probably aren't talking about, but you and I obviously acknowledge it. How important is it for Dallas? And then you got Ronald Jones as well. Right. Okay, Ronald Jones yeah. as well. Now, you know the funny thing about all three of these guys? These guys all have a little bit of Belichick in them. That's right. That's right. All three of them have a little yes, bit of Belichick do. in them, whether directly or indirectly through Tom Brady and over there with Ronald Jones in Tampa right. Bay. Right. right. All three of them uh, have that experience. Two of them have rings. All right. Am I correct? Oh, okay. man, you bringing it. You Gilmore bringing got it. rings. Ronald yeah. Jones got rings. That's right. How important is it? Not only because these guys are talented, not only because these guys are big time players or big name acquisitions, but to understand Brandon Cooks was in New England. He's smart. Yes. Right? He knows how to how to go about his business. Stephon Gilmore was in New England. He knows how to, he's smart. He knows how to go about his business. He also was in Indianapolis, right? That's another good, right. good, good organization. You got Ronald Jones, who obviously spent some time with Tom Brady in Tampa Bay when they were down there doing some work and they won a Super Bowl. So, how important is it to bring not only great players and great talent, but some veterans who have been from great organizations and great programs as well? Who know when to open their mouth, when to close their mouth, know how about, about going to work. Yeah. It's about handling their business. These guys will come in 
And I'm and see with Belichick, it used to be what seven, eight in the morning, nine in the morning to what? Oh shoot, no, it was it was five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. These guys understand that uh, everyday workman's attitude. Yeah. Go in, bow your neck, do your job, yeah. handle your business, and the team will take care of themselves. That is what I liked about this. And man, how did you bring it up? I was like, what is it about all of these guys? And you connected the dots. Yeah, absolutely. These guys understand that. When you go to work, it's not about, can I get on my phone? Oh, man, <laughs> can I tweet out? You get what I'm saying? I get it. We're going to take away the tweeting and bring more of the work ethic in Absolutely. there, man. Uh, bring more, not I, but team. Yeah. You know, you saw, and I hate to go back on this, but we saw a few guys, especially a few defensive guys, at the end of the year talking about what they did. Mm. Not the accomplishment. I'm not going to call them names out. Not the accomplishments of okay. what the team okay. did and how we need to go out and get pieces that can be helpful, which they did this year. Yep. And they took a page – from other teams, which we used to do eight, ten years ago, yeah. go out and get a quality free agent. They went out and got some quality what, free what agents. Is, I know we got, we're going to bring it back to the offensive mm. line. I know we had started out. What is Gilmore going to do for this secondary? You have a Trayvon Diggs who's about to be due for some big boy money. They're going to have to give him a huge extension, right, because of what he's done. What is Gilmore going to do for that room, for Curse, for Malik Hooker, for Dono? For all those guys in that DB room, what is he going to bring? I, I think what he's going to bring besides his experience, number one, but the ability to understand your role in the big scheme of mm. things. Coach Harris has been talking about doing your job, trying to be the best, but now he's going to start connecting those dots. If you do this, where your help is coming from, what you need to do in certain situations, you become a better down and distance player. Yeah. And if you can do that right there, you it, it'll enhance already his ball or hawking skills. And that, that's just what I believe. I now, I, I would like to know from a wide receiver, no. what do you see what he would bring? Yeah, I think Gilmore's going to bring exactly that I think when you talk about Dan Quinn and what he has historically done, people right. know him from the Legion of Boom. That's right, right? that's right. And the Legion of Boom, they had the front seven that could get after the quarterback, and the guys that will be able to play man to man coverage and lock you down. Right, and yeah. they, they didn't necessarily have to lock you down. They just need to stay in your hip pocket. So when that inaccurate, uh, ill timed ball gets thrown up in the air, you got ball hawks. Y you know what? And this is what a lot of people don't know. You know because that's just your team. Mm -hmm. The Legion of Boom was in place before the for, before the front end. Correct. That that was rare. When right. I when I saw that right there, I was like, "Wow, what are they doing? They kind of doing it backwards." Mm -hmm. You know, they had they front end in place, yeah. and here we got some pass rushes, yep. be it not in the middle, just on the outside. But they they have players now that if the guys up front do their job, yep. it'll be a lot of things happening. Absolutely. So now you flip the script over to the offensive side of the ball. What are the, what is Brandon Cooks going to bring to a young? <laughs> a young C.D. Lamb. The same thing, man. He's going to force C.D. to be a better route. Yes, sir. He's going to force C.D. to study film. You know, that's what because I, was I think this kid would say, I think Brandon Cooks, and I can call him a kid because yeah. my age difference. For sure. He's going to say, hey, man, C.D., look at, check this out. You know, because Michael Irvin, I remember him as a rookie. He went to the next level. I remember when – when I used to tease him about Jerry Rice, Jerry Rice still the best receiver in the league. <laughs> he used to get hot. Woohoo! But what it what it, what he came to me one day and said, but, you know, this this double team, I gotta learn how. So he went to watch and film with other great players nice. on how they would beat double teams on certain routes, how he would position himself to get the get himself open for Troy. Yeah, and they worked on that and they worked on that. So awesome. that is what they're gonna bring. That is what I think Brandon Cook's gonna bring to that room is a mental toughness. To work through things because he's not bigger than than Michael Gallup. No, he's he's not. He's, he's probably, fast though. He, he he's fast, but he ain't got the size nope. or the wiriness of a CD Lamb. But he has the all around Correct. ability. He don't drop passes. Correct. He run cor correct routes, yep. and he find out what his quarterback wants mm -hmm. on certain plays. You gonna have to go up as a receiver and say, "Hey, I got this. Throw it." Yep. And you are gonna get knocked you know, out of you. You know what I'm excited? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm excited about? Kellen Moore last year, beginning of the year, he was running read routes right. in the offense. He was right. putting read Explain routes. Explain that. Explain so read route. Read route is, for for instance, 
you run this route versus this coverage, right? right? So say you have a comeback, okay? Right. You're going to run 18 yards and come back. Right. Well, you would do that versus cover one or cover three. Right. When you get out there, your pre-snap read, let's confirm that that's the coverage that you're receiving. If that coverage changes to anything but cover one and cover three, and say it rolls to cover two, you now have to run a corner route. Okay, right. so you got to change your stem. You got to run inside now. You got to run up a certain amount of yardage, put your foot in the ground, and take it to the corner now. Okay, right. and you got to be quarterback friendly. That's versus cover two. If it's cover two man, now you're going to run a corner post, right? So right. having a play called and saying that you have one of these three routes based upon what the coverage presents itself, right. that's what Kellen Moore was trying to do last year in the beginning of the season, and you saw the miscommunication between C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott. Sometimes right. C.D. was going in there. Sometimes he was pulling back. Wow. Dak was letting it go. I don't really know if I want to throw this. They weren't seeing it correctly. I believe that Brandon Cooks is going to bring that level of intelligence to that room. And he's going to show those guys and really simplify it so that they can run those routes. The benefit of read routes is you always win. Always. You always win. Always. It doesn't matter. It's, so it's not just like, hey, Nate, you just run a go. Okay, I'm running a go. All right? All right, Ray, you run a go if they present this. If they present this defense, I need you to run this because this route wins versus this coverage when a go wouldn't. Right? So putting your team in a position to always be successful, that's honestly why you know, I always refer to New England because – you had to be an intelligent player. You couldn't play in that system if you weren't intelligent because everything was a read route. Yes. Everything. And that's why you saw TB12 for as long as he played, always had an outlet. There was always somebody to get the ball to. Uh, so I think Brandon Cooks brings that. But what do you think Ronald Jones, How is what, what role is he going to fulfill with Zeke leaving? And they hurried up and signed Ronald Jones. They, they see something because of Ronald Jones I saw back in Tampa. He was that guy that was close to Tony Pollard. He could catch the ball. He could run. I don't know how well he can block. We'll have to see how that goes. But he's just another explosive player. Mm. And uh, He's a big boy. Yeah, I, but I don't know who would be that mm. – who would be that guy? I mean, how do you see Ronald Jones? I don't know enough about him I think, yeah. to, to, to talk, you know. I believe that the understanding that he has coming in here and expectation is to be a short yardage back. Right. Be a, the power, big right. power back. I got to look up and see how big he is. Right. Um, but he's coming in to be the big power back. So he's a big guy. I mean, I, 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 and I guess by the guy that they had there who never came off the field for them at the time, uh, I always looked at him as the big power guy, you know. Uh, so Ronald Quant Jones is, I mean, he he's I guess he's just stout, 5'11", 205. Yeah, he's heavier, yeah. he heavier than that, though, Nate. He's he heavier is. than that. Yeah, okay. I'd probably give him 215, 230 right, right now. Um, but he's just a compact, just solid little bowling ball. Um, but I think he's coming in to fulfill that short yardage role, and I think he's coming in to block. Okay. I think he's coming in to fill. That's what people did not value enough about Zeke. Zeke kept people off of Dak. And I mean, he got beat up a couple of times doing that, too. I yeah. mean, because linebackers nowadays ain't got no finesse to them. They just run straight over a running back. <laughs> they thought, oh, we get on the highlight film. Right. One of the few legal hits you could have now yeah. without getting fined. Um, but, okay, so we addressed some of the free agent acquisitions. But let's talk about this offensive line, Nate. All right? This offensive line, they signed, they signed a free agent. Um, I, I can't remember the, the, the man. I, I don't, can't pronounce his name. I'll say yeah, it that, that way. That is the deal. Yeah, um, not yet. I will by the time the season comes around. But right now I can't pronounce his name. But they signed a free agent who's a tackle. Okay? Tackle um, guard. Tackle guard. guard combo, yep. yes. Um, but you have a Terrence Steele that's coming off a of, uh, ACL, correct? Yeah. You have a Tyron Smith who is – he is what he is. Okay, uh, great player, but un unfortunately historically injured. Okay, and then you have a Tyler Smith who was asked to do more than a rookie should have to have to do last year, right. um, and he did a good. He did a pretty darn good job. Yes. Okay. Three players, Nate, all play tackle. All of them have proven themselves to be worthy of of, of a starting offensive line position. Without having to move one of them to guard, if you don't have that as an option, Nate, who are you moving? Who's starting at your tackle? Which two players? Tyron, Ty, Tyler Smith, Tyler, the, the, the last Tyler year's rookie, Smith, yeah, and and, and and Steel. If he's healthy, if you deem him on, healthy, hold on, Nate, hold on. You gonna sit the 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 Hall of the so called Hall of Famer? He gonna back up these guys? Yes, yes, I. I, I the future in the NFL is now. Ooh. And uh, 
And if you're not willing to uh, allow these guys to grow, these are going to be the <coughs> excuse me. Excuse. These guys are turning to disgruntled players in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Uh, saying people got they sensitive. Oh, their agents going to say, hey, man, <laughs> what? I'm, I'm being honest. Tyron Smith is mature enough and he understands the team concept. Yeah. And he should know by now that these are the up and coming guys. But I don't know. I don't know. I've never talked to you about this. If you've ever been in that situation where you're transitioning from being the man yeah. to being a back, I'm not sure if that ever happened in your career. They didn't give me that opportunity. They just cut me. Got you. You know that? Like I was Zeke. Uh, once, like I was a big stud. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Man, you could have kept me around for a year or two. <laughs> but anyway, I would take a little something. But but for the guys that you have witnessed then in your in your time that had to make that transition from being the that that dude right, right? Not, right. not not just a good player but like that guy right. to all of a sudden having to flip the switch to saying okay I'm a role player now it, it happens and the good ones can go to those role players you know you don't ask a Tom Brady or the guys with that ilk but you can ask the offensive lineman hey man we we really like you we really value what you can bring to the locker room and what you can your work ethic on the field but this is where we're going to put you now and i think Tyron would have would have would have went for it but uh now you taking Steel who's a right tackle Steel is a right tackle yes he is he is not a swing tackle and maybe Ms. Like Double, I, mr jones said he's a swing tackle Nate Apparently last Steel. week he said that <clears throat> that Terrence Steele is a swing tackle. Uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, and I hate to but think that money is the root behind all of this, uh-huh. you know. But this dude, obviously, when he was in there and and they were rolling, the run game was second to none. Uh-huh. And I don't know what happened, but when he left out, it dropped. Uh-huh. Now. Steel is a grade A road grader. He's when they come to running the rock, that is your guy. He's nasty. But a pass blocker, he's just average. Mm. So he is a play action pass guy. Which is harder to teach? Blocking, pass blocking. If you become a grade A pass blocker, you'll last forever in the league. Run blockers just last so long until their feet are not quick enough anymore and then they're out of the league. Mm. You know, but a pass blocker. Play Peterson, play. yeah, he is the, he is Peterson. the example last year. Yeah, he was a grade A pass blocker, a great run blocker, but a grade A second to none pass blocker. That's why he lasts so long yeah. in the league. But once them feet leave you, man, Game it's on. over for as a run blocker. <laughs> yeah, and and me and you've always talked about it. Me and you like you know you was for Peterson, I wasn't for Peterson yeah. because I, I I know as an offensive lineman. You can't like Ty, like Tyler like Tyron is doing. Yeah. You can't take great. Uh, you can't just miss chunks of a season or miss whole seasons and come back and think you can do things. Yeah. It's not like we did with Y.E. Tittle. Uh, what was <laughs> this? <laughs> I'm thinking back in the '60s. I'm stupid. Not Y.E. Tittle, the quarterback. <laughs> what was our man name? <laughs> What's up, man? I was name? never looking at that name. Like, what you say? You said what? Well, Titty what? What's up, <laughs> man? Name? The wide receiver we brought in last year. Let, let me tell you something. Help me out here, bro. You talking about um, T. Y. Higgins? T. Y. Not Higgins. T. Y. T. Y. T. Y. Hilton. T. Y. Hilton. Sorry, he got me all thrown off now. Oh my God, that's hey, this great thing about doing your own yeah, show. Exactly. Hey, like we brought in my man last year, the, the T. Y. and he fit it right in. They need to resign him. He, yeah, they do. But you don't do that with offensive linemen. Mm. You don't do. You put them in there. You let them work, and they do their thing, man. And, and that is what I like about this new offensive line coach, man. Y'all, y'all old offensive line coach. Mm-hmm. He started with the Cowboys back when I played. Okay, uh-huh. he was a rookie then. Tell, but, tell people what they can expect from him. He's a tough guy. He's a he's he's a guy that believes in hard work, man. And uh, and I, hold on, dog. Somebody trying to come <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, he's trying to come in. I want. Somebody trying to come in. Yeah, yeah. It's love over there. I, I can't think of my offensive line, my coach name. Now you got me so shit. I got up. you thrown off. I'll find it for you. Yeah, but anyway, this guy when he find out, y'all stay with us, man. We both old. We've been hitting the head several <laughs> times. But uh, this coach here, I know him personally. He's a good guy. He's gonna be a hard working guy. And he's going to push these guys, Mike man. Mike Solari. Mike Solari. Wow. 
I don't want. He was on the Dallas staff staff for eighty seven and eighty eight. Yes, Apple came in eighty six. He was here for a year. Yeah, and um, he was good, man. Okay, he soaked up everything, right. and he took that same. Is he work. a dog? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Is he going to demand that you're a dog? I don't know. Dog? Over the years, I lost contact with him. Okay, but. Everything, everything I've heard with him, he he works with what he has. Okay. And, and a lot of times, a guy get hired because he's able to take those six or seven guys and make them one unit. It ain't it ain't about – with offensive line, but it, with offensive line coaches, it ain't about how smart you is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm talking about like, oh, Kellen Moore, great up and coming, or this guy, mm-hmm. great. They, they, they're not those guys. Yeah. They're guys that – can see the big picture. Okay. How do these five guys, how can I put them together so they can work? And what do the what adjustments I need to make? Are they soft? Are they tough? Uh, what am I working with? Can I get them mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, and so Solari is that type of guy. That's good. Uh he everywhere he's went, game the game has gotten a little better for him. And I'm talking about the offensive line would get a little bit better for him. I don't know why he left Seattle. What was the deal there? Yeah. Because he that seemed like it should have been a great fit for him. For sure. But he's here now and uh, I think Coach Solara would do a great job. Nice. Not with Y E Tittle, but it, it'll be all right. <laughs> Something like it though. Yeah. Something like it. All right, well I got a jump ship for you, Nate. Okay. Uh, um there's a really explosive, exciting quarterback in this league. By the name of Lamar Jackson. Last time I checked, high-profile quarterbacks are highly sought after. That's right, they are. Last time I checked, if you're the fastest at your position, you usually don't have to worry about having a job. Right. Um, last time I checked, MVPs don't have to fight over contracts. That's right. Okay. So, so why is Lamar Jackson... Because this is one time I think he's in the wrong place. Okay. Anywhere else he would have been signed. Okay. Any, and I, I really believe at any other team, but the Ravens don't, don't work like that. The, the, but is know. it just the Ravens thing or is there a conspiracy going on? Do, do you think that the, that the owners got on the phone together? They don't and, have to. Not when okay. it comes to a quarterback. Okay. Uh, so why is it that they were able to put a – Put a, a a a tender on him, our franchise tag that has two first round tenders, and nobody's jumping at it for a, a, the fastest quarterback in the league, who's the most explosive, the most electrifying, who puts his team in a position to win every ball game because of his athletic ability, who is an MVP, who almost goes to the Super Bowl every year, and he nobody wants to give up two first round picks for him. And the, the excuse is because he represents himself. That's the reason why, Nate? No, the, the reason why is this guy, there's all of those things you said. Now, his playoff uh, his playoff record is not great. Mm-hmm. But that that is an unspoken thing, man. Hmm. The, these other owners and GMs are not going to go at, these, at this quarterback. They not <laughs> until – some unspoken word passed amongst them, they're not going to touch it. So they blinking at each other. Oh, yeah. They, it's, that is yeah. Looking like, it's just an oh, understanding. Yeah. They, yeah. So you're saying they, they just all looking at each other yeah, and saying, don't touch them. What they're trying to do, what the Ravens are trying to do. Prove a point. Is, is prove a point and get Lamar under, right, around, right around 30 mil. They ain't getting him for no 30 mil, Nate. What is what is this tender? What, you go look up his tender. Is Nate, t- they, so I, I I believe the issue is he wants Deshaun Watson guaranteed money. Look but, at what his tender is. Look it up. It's a, under 40, round 40, 32. His, he is not – they don't want to pay him, bro. They want to build their team. They want to get it where they want, they want to get it. They want to get it back up to a c- competitive level at all positions. That's what the Ravens always did. They've been a defensive-led team. That their offense. Yeah, you're right, thirty-two point four two. I'm telling you, they don't want to pay That's, him more than that. Nate, listen here. What's your <laughs> What's your quarterback, Danny Dimes, out there in New York? He's gonna make about forty-five. And Lamar Jackson has to take less than him. Make it Make it make sense. I, make I, it make nobody 
Nate, I am, if it was anybody else, I could make it make sense. This is the Ravens, who's but, always. But nobody's going to take him? Nope. I hear you say he's with the Ravens. They will wait till after the draft. They will wait till after the draft. Nobody, I'm telling you. Nate, this is, this is Kaepernick 2.0. I'm calling it how it is. Dang, that's my opinion. But the, the only thing is, he, he ain't going to be able to sue. Facts. That, the thing is, he ain't going to be able to sue. They ain't leaving no money, no money trails. They ain't leaving no emails. <laughs> they ain't leaving no texts. Oh, they'll learn. Yeah. They'll learn how to yeah. go about their business. So they, they, like you say, everybody blink, blink. They blink. Yeah. You I know what that means? your boy. They sent their Morse code. And now he'll be sitting home. And it's it, unheard of. This is, uh, let me ask you this question. Lamar Jackson on your team, are you a better team? You're a better team. Yes, you are. Lamar Jackson on your team, are you not one of the most dangerous offenses automatically in the league? You are. But ask that other question. When you get to the playoffs, <laughs> can he take you a step there's a whole lot of There's a whole lot of quarterbacks. I, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. If they can get this kid under wraps. There's, there's some. And, and, yeah. If they they trying to send a, a message to let me, the ask, league. let me ask you a question. Is Lamar Jackson – Paying the price for Deshaun Watson's contract. Oh, yeah. But see, that was Cleveland. Cleveland did that. So why aren't everybody mad at Cleveland? Lamar's already, I mean, Deshaun is already signed. Deshaun is already signed, and they can't take it back. But they ain't gonna make sure they're gonna make sure this this plague don't go further. That's what they call it a plague. I don't agree with that. I, I, I agree with you. They are putting it, their foot down, they're like. Y'all thought y'all had control. We're not doing guaranteed contracts. If you could, if you are a guy that could put teams on your back, especially in the playoffs and win games, you're going to get the money. But guys now, they have had several guys who have not won playoff games and getting buku money. And you are suffering with the rest of your team. If you are that guy, if you're not that guy, and they but two of them, that can do that. One play for the Bengals. This is one play for the Kansas City Chiefs. Supposedly, the report says that the Ravens offered Jackson 133 million dollars guaranteed at at signing. Yeah, 175 million if he got injured, and 200 million. If he is on the roster on the fifth day of the 2026 league year, they gave him basically three years. He'll either take that, a play for 32 mil, on a half play, or however you want to do that, it. Three years. Yeah, I can't even do that. Guarantee, man. man. So, so it looks like they're paying him what he should be getting paid, but he he just wants more guaranteed money. It ain't happening, man. Some teams are judging you for what you're doing now. You know, what, what you did, we paid you for what you did, and, and, and I can be mad, mm -hmm. you can be mad, but the Ravens' ownership and front office ain't going for it. I'm they, sorry. I hate to say this. I, I'll keep it, they, I'll they keep it 100. Letters. They're sending letters via pigeons or something, Nate. So huh? <laughs> the owners are sending letters to each other via pigeons. Because I, they, I don't care how they, they know. send it. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this question before we get off. I need a direct answer, Nate. Okay, I'm looking right at you. I'm steadfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dallas Cowboys. Yes. If you had a choice, Lamar Jackson or Dak Prescott? Neither one. <laughs> Neither one. Ne See, because they're the same guy. Whoa, whoa, what? They're the same guy. Nate, hold on. Wait a minute now. You got to give We were supposed to be getting off the air, but you got to explain this. This is Do you mean this, like the unproven part of it? This is what no, this is what I believe. And I and I and I love both guys. They are regular season phenoms. Okay. But they are not playoff phenoms. Okay. And when you you go he's one in three in the playoffs, Lamar. Okay. Uh Dak's record, what he's two and six. Mm. That's not winning football. Okay. And they are the same guy. Uh, I think Dak can be much better because I think his arm is better. Okay. And I and I think we'll see that this year. Hmm. Uh I have no, you know, I, I you know, I I was one of the guys 
that when Tony went down, everybody was scrambling. No, we have the quarterback. Hmm. Now this quarterback has gotten better mentally, but he hasn't uh, transferred to the field. Okay, that that is because of uh, your mentor. Okay. Uh, I think that this year here, a lot of things will be asked of him, and I think he will deliver. He'll deliver, okay. Yeah. All right. So now, but for us, what has happened in the past, yeah. and that's what we asking about. Yeah. I would take neither guy. Neither guy. Yes. Okay. So you, yeah. you, you the quarterback. Yeah, I, I'm the quarterback because I need a smart <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> what? Hey. Look here, when he, let me tell y'all something right now. When when this group came to me, the Dub Network group came to yeah. me, and Julie Dobbs, and they we want you to do. Yeah, a, a, a show. Okay, and I said okay, and I and then we worked through the details and yep. we thought about it, and they said, "What you think?" I said, "Isaiah, stand back." <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a quarterback. I, hear I you. need a quarterback. I hear you. I can't just do this by myself. I, I can bring people over here and fumble it up, like yeah. you know, Y. A. Tittle <laughs> and Viagra. <laughs> okay, I can I can mess it up. But I ain't gonna do that. Hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mike Solari, forget his name. That's all right. Blue pills on deck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I ain't finna mess it up. Everybody needs a smart quarterback. I'll be you, Nate. I Thank got you. you. I got you. Thank you. I'll be your quarterback. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And Nate, what did they do? Yeah. We got we on what? Niagara, we have flushed another one. <laughs> <laughs> I almost messed up. I almost messed up. Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings.